So Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone both got a surprise update of sorts here where it fixed a few issues, balanced a few weapons, and more. Today, we're taking a look at those changes that came along with this update for both Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone that you should be aware of and letting you know the changes that came along with it. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of this surprise update? Like it, dislike it, whatever the case, drop your thoughts. But if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it and consider subscribing. Stay there with all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content. Finally, check out my friends over at G Fuel. We're kind of expressing you up to 30% off your entire order, but for now, let's jump into it. So firstly, this update seems to just be a playlist update, something that you just need to simply log into your game, restart application, and then jump back into it, and everything should be applied. It's odd, though, because PC did see an update 1.37 for Modern Warfare 3 go out as of like a day or two ago at this point, nothing has been seen on PlayStation or Xbox's end just yet. Though PlayStation did have that update logged in the back end for the database, it just has not been rolled out just yet for people to be able to preload or actually download. But it's weird that if that's the case, that that is the season one reloaded update, that it's been something that's been out there for so long because it was added in the back end for PlayStation, I think like almost a week ago at this point. And again, a day or two ago, it rolled out for PC, where we of course don't have access to the new content just yet. But if if that included some changes along with it, it's interesting. But for this update, again, all you had to do is simply restart your application. On the Modern Warfare 3 side of things, we have a lot of things that are more minor changes and stuff that honestly you probably wouldn't care too much about we can touch on that kind of stuff here in a second but the big things to me come down to finally the availability to unlock a couple of the weapons and attachments or more so aftermarket parts that come along with the weekly challenges the two that have been busted were the jack beholder rifle kit that's now available and unlockable if you completed any of those challenges and then the most recent week six challenge of the etten amr9 aftermarket part that was something that as of yesterday and the challenge going live it also was bugged and did not unlock if you completed the five challenges to go along with it. That now should be fixed out and available to unlock. So that means that not only do you get those rewards, but you don't have to worry about whether or not it's accurately tracking that entire season long eight week challenge set. If you ended up not having one completely unlocked for you, maybe you did those five challenges, but was there that possibility that it wouldn't count towards your overall completion so that come week eight, you wouldn't get that camo. You don't have to worry about that too much anymore now at this point. It seems like those are fixed out. There are a few adjustments to the overall maps with spawn points and lighting being a main target here of these changes. There are a few challenge tracking issues resolved, such as the week four challenge where you had to destroy five vehicles with a recommended weapon. The other thing that was mentioned here as of yesterday, but is then thrown into the mix with this, was the progression of Modern Warfare 2 completionist camos for zombies, where the challenge tracking was not accurate and it was something that wasn't giving you credit, even if you did that kind of stuff. Now, that said, there still is a decent bit of these that actually do exist across the board. Like, for example, I was working on, I want to say, the DM56 going for that Golden Enigma and just working overall towards my Borealis camo and the five attachment challenge that comes along with it. It does not track, so it's something that I've seen that it has to be without a certain type of attachment, like an underbarrel. It has to be something that isn't upgraded or anything like that. Some of these issues persisted since launch and just kind of have made their way back up in some very random areas. So while some of these things have been fixed out, some still do persist just know that going forward and then we mentioned how like a lot of the other stuff was really small for example it improved the white accent color coverage of the atlanta phase 2024 camo stuff like that so not a whole ton of super important things to the grand scheme of the game but jumping over to the warzone side of things here there are some general bug fixes but the biggest thing here out of this was a little bit of some weapon tuning now it's not going to be something that is the full suite of weapon tuning here that we'll see as of next week but this is like a preliminary adjustment to some weapons and there are kind of two of the problematic ones here one was taken out entirely but the firstly the mtz interceptor that had its max damage reduced to 85 down from 95 and a minimum damage reduced to a 78 down from an 84. then the snake shot ammunition for the tier that attachment has been re-enabled but the damage per pellet max range now is reduced to 12 down from 34. so a massive severe severe nerf to that one so it should not be problematic at least on paper here for the foreseeable future now that said there's a few things to note in regards to these weapon changes here that happened today first and foremost it seems like based off of preliminary testing and footage that's already going out from people playing the game as the time i'm recording this it seems like that yeah sure on paper the mtz got a nerf but it seems like it still has that potential to three shots 
but mostly you're going to see like a four to five shot if you're not hitting everything but headshots. So on paper, yes, it is a nerf, but in the right hands, it's still exceptionally lethal. So it might still be something that is problematic and may see a further adjustment here to it as of next week and the season one reloaded update. But at least for the next week or so, you might still see this one around. And the next part to note here out of this is that this is only a sort of band-aid in regards to weapon tuning. This is not everything that is going to be happening as of all the weapon tuning for the rest of the season. Admittedly, last week, whenever Raven tweeted, we've seen your questions about weapon balance and we're happy to confirm that an update is coming mid next week. And yes, that includes changes to the MTZ Interceptor. Myself and probably you and a lot of other people thought that this would be a larger update in regards to weapon balancing. I mean, it seemed like they'd be talking about a couple of weapons more at least than just two, but that's the only adjustments we got here. But it was reiterated that yes, as of next week, a more comprehensive weapon balancing update will go live with the midseason reloaded update. So that's something to be aware of that this is not the be all end all for weapon tuning. And thankfully so, because I don't think that this did a whole lot to the overall meta. In fact, I look at this and I'm kind of just like, why did they release this? If it didn't do anything impactful, it didn't change a whole ton of weapons. Well, you're really just adding an attachment back to the loot pool that can be used in game. And that's about it. So pretty weak update in my opinion. But again, we're a week off of the big one here. So fingers crossed that it is actually big. Personally, I'm hoping to see some adjustments to a lot of weapons. Honestly, I'd love to see a lot of weapons gutted. I'd be cool with gutting the Bass B. I'd be cool with gutting the Pulmyat 762. The MTZ Interceptor, I think that's a pretty general consensus of get that one out of here. The MTZ 762 would be the problematic weapon beyond that. I'd be cool with getting out in front of that one before anything else. The fire shotguns are obviously insanely annoying. So I'd love to see a lot of things adjusted here with this update, but we can only take speculation and a guess as to what that would actually include as of next week but anyways that was the update here as of today again bug fixes a lot of things that are more minor things you probably wouldn't notice but also a few noteworthy items like again the weapon tuning and adjustments to unlocks but for now that is what we're going to call it so just wanted to fill you guys in and keep you guys in the loop before we wrap everything up make sure you get my friends over at g fuel for up to 30 percent off your entire order to me g fuel is my cup of coffee in the morning gets my productivity flowing and the day going whether you want to grab a restock or pick something up for the very first time grab your favorite tubs like hype sauce, pog juicer, something like a starter kit, Code Espresso can help you out and offer a nice discount of a year round anywhere from 20 to 30% off your entire order. Personally, I'd recommend pog juice, pink drip, the Morbius nectarine flavor, star fruit, hype sauce, and a few others. But if you guys want to check anything out for yourself, check the link down below and use Code Espresso at checkout. But for now, that's what we're going to wrap it up. So let me know your thoughts down below. Like this update. Think it's enough. Personally, I don't. I kind of think it was a weak update. But again, a week off from the big season one reloaded update. Fingers crossed that there's something substantial with that. But if you enjoyed the video, I found it at all insightful. Drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to the video with all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and anything FPS related. I'd love to have you. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modern Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.